This LG monitor that they sent over for a video is an OLED monitor that isn't 17 feet across. It's just like a, like a normal monitor size, which means it's basically the monitor I've spent the last eight years waiting for. So today we're going to talk about meeting your heroes and you know what they say about that. Now the brand new LG 27GR95QE, which oh, you just can't help but be aroused by those monitor names, is aside from being an OLED, on paper essentially as much monitor as anyone could ever want. You have a refresh rate that'll excite even the pigeons in the audience, crazy low response times, and very good color gamut coverage. And physically, it even has hexagons on it, which as we've established many times before, is the gameriest shape. In the box, you get all of the cables you need for the monitor. It also comes with an external power supply, which I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer in internal power supplies because a cat can't chew a power supply that's in your monitor. You also get a little remote, so no physical buttons on the monitor. Interesting quirk with the remote, it uses the same frequency as just LG TV remotes. So if you have an LG TV in the same room and somebody wants to watch some TV on it, they can accidentally turn your monitor off mid gaming session, which I say from experience. Now physically, the monitor is real sexy. It's got lean bezels with this recessed chin that houses some sensor action and the panel is also mostly very thin in standard OLED fashion, although we do have a pretty big control booty bit, which aside from being just covered in hexagons, also has a little bit of lighting built into it. Cause gamer, I guess. Now the stand on this monitor is amazing and I'll spend some more time gushing about it a bit later, but first let's talk about the IO, which it has everything you need. It even has an optical port, which is quite unusual for a monitor and I think it's a nice addition. Anyway, let's set it up and talk a bit about the monitor's ergonomics. Now we're quickly going to talk about the ergonomics while I load into a scav raid here, because this monitor has one of the best stands I've ever seen on a monitor. It's got a kind of like standard nice monitor stand, uh, so it means you have like the normal range of motion. You can even turn it into portrait mode if you want to, and it feels nice and sturdy and it actually sits in the place that you want. But that's pretty standard. A lot of monitor stands do that. The thing that this does differently is that the stand actually is tall enough for you to get the monitor properly into your eye line, which I've never seen on one of these monitor stands before. They're always just a little bit too short, which means you still have to look down at them as opposed to look them straight in the eyes like you're going to challenge them to a fist fight. Which means this is the first monitor I've interacted with that doesn't actually need you to buy a VESA arm for it so that you don't incur back injury with it. So that's very cool. Good job, LG. Now obviously, gaming on it is amazing. Now the thing that always gets me about gaming on an OLED is not the infinite contrast ratio, which is kind of like it's party trick. That's nice, but it's not the biggest deal for me. The thing that always blows me away is with the combination of the low pixel response time of OLEDs and the 240 hertz refresh rate of this panel means that it is snappy as hell. You can't feel the monitor at all, which is <laughs> it's so awesome. Inputs, even in a game like Tarkov, feel frankly telepathic. Unfortunately, image quality isn't perfect. In typical OLED fashion, the monitor does kind of struggle with detail in deep blacks. So in a very dark game like Escape from Tarkov, depending on the time of day, you can lose a lot of detail. But at least it doesn't have the glow of an IPS panel, which in the same dark scenes is even more distracting than the flat black everywhere in my opinion. Now speaking of the monitor's lack of IPS glow, it means that this monitor humiliates IPS displays in terms of off-axis viewing. I spent about two and a half weeks living with this monitor and every time I walked up to it, I was blown away by the off-axis viewing performance compared to an IPS display. Now, when it comes to measurements, the monitor is mostly excellent. Like the panel uniformity is the best I've ever seen by a reasonable margin, but there are a couple of anomalies. The first one is it doesn't go very bright, but unless you're using it outdoors in the Sahara, it's probably gonna be fine. At no point while using it did I think the monitor wasn't bright enough. And the other anomaly is my sample had some color accuracy problems with magenta and orange. Now this is by no means a contentious statement, OLED panels are majestic. 
the combination of the beautiful, vibrant, contrasty image combined with the snappiness that comes from the low response time and a high refresh rate means that gaming on this display is a sight to behold. Now OLED panels aren't quite perfect, like I mentioned before, they're not the brightest displays ever, although again, I found that this one in like normal indoor settings was more than bright enough for my use case. And then there's also the problem of burn-in, which does mean that you need to baby these monitors a little bit. You have to set very aggressive monitor sleep modes in Windows and uh, remember to turn the monitor off every time you walk away from it and not have it like sitting on static images. But honestly, I don't really mind having to baby tech if it rewards me for the babying. And this monitor really does. The thing is, there is a pretty big butt to this monitor. Well, there's two big ones. The one is the price. A thousand dollars for a 27 inch 1440 display is a lot, even for something as special as this. But that's not the biggest butt. The biggest butt is the matte coating on the display. It's, it's way too aggressive. I get why you want a matte coating on an OLED display. Reducing reflections on a not very bright monitor is good, but the problem is it's just so visible on any light colors. So it means that on the desktop, you can't not look at it. And in sky and video games and stuff, it's so noticeable and it kind of ruins the immersion of it. The best way I can describe it is that it's like it adds a film grain to the image, which is not something you want. And it meant the first time I turned the monitor on, my reaction was, ooh, which is not great. I waited like eight years for this monitor and it costs a thousand dollars. My first reaction when I turned it on should have been, so LG, please make a version of this monitor that has the same coating on it as your OLED TVs because that it, it's way better. And this current coating is kind of a deal breaker for me with this monitor, which is so sad because it's such a good monitor. And if it wasn't for the coating, I would be inappropriately excited about it. This monitor was the chosen one, but then it just tripped over the last couple of hurdles and sheared both its legs off at the knee. Like it was so close. Now, not all matte finishes are bad and the matte finish on this display may not be a deal breaker for everybody, but I'm sitting here now and I can't not look at it. So with that, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of quite aggressive matte finishes on displays. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you, LG, for sending over the monitor. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, until the next video, bye-bye.